Kepler 444 is an interesting place. This system consists of three stars and five planets, and to top it all off, it's nearly as old as the universe itself. Let's find out more. Lying 116 light years away, we find the K-type orange star, Kepler 444a. This has a mass and radius of roughly 75% of our Sun. K-type stars typically have luminosities ranging between 10 and 42% of that of our Sun, so the luminosity of Kepler 444 is likely to be somewhere between these two values. This star is the primary star, and orbiting it are two red dwarf M-type stars called Kepler 444b and c. These orbit each other at less than 50 million kilometers, and both of them orbit the primary star in a highly elongated orbit, which brings the pair of stars to within five astronomical units, or about the orbit of Jupiter, from the primary. These stars have masses that are 29 and 25% of the Sun, and even though no radius data is available, red dwarf stars tend to have radii that are proportional to their masses, so I'm going to take a guess and say that their radii are about 25 and 30% of that of our star, though this is an educated guess on my part using data that I have available. Orbiting the primary star are also five planets. The presence of the other two stars probably disrupted any planet forming material lying further out in orbit, meaning this is a very compact planetary solar system. All five of the planets are found very close to the primary star, and their orbits could easily fit within the orbit of Mercury. All of the five planets are rocky sub-Earths, with sizes that are all bigger than the planet Mercury, but smaller than our planet. Let's have a closer look at these planets, shall we? Firstly, and closest in, we find Kepler 444b, that's a little b. This orbits at just 6.3 million kilometers whipping round in a mere 3 days and 14 hours. It has a radius that's just 40% of that of the Earth. I found an interesting planetary temperature calculator online, and whilst this is in no way an accurate representation of the actual temperature, this place would be hot. Maybe with temperatures as high as 850 degrees Celsius. Just to put that into a bit of context, lead melts at about 330 degrees. Just a million kilometres further out, orbiting at around 7.3 million kilometres, we find the next of Kepler-444's planets, 444c. This is a little bigger than the innermost planet, having a radius 49.7% of that of the Earth. It's still very close in, and as a result rushes round the star, completing an orbit in just four and a half days. This would still be a punishingly hot planet, but I want to land and show you something, and it's alright, we're protected anyway. From here, if we look out into space, the star looks huge in the sky, but from here, we can also see the innermost planet. It's only about a million kilometres away, that's less than three times as far away as the moon is from the Earth. Let's take off again and travel to the third planet in this system, 444d. This planet orbits the star at a distance of just 9 million kilometres and completes one orbit in 6 days and 5 hours. This is another rocky sub-Earth type planet, 53% of the radius of our home world. Even though this is the middle world in both orbital distance and size, we'll pass it by and continue on to the next planet in our itinerary. Planet number 4, or Kepler 444e as it's otherwise known, is another smallish rocky planet. It's the largest one we've found so far, at 54.6% of the size of the Earth, and this planet orbits the star at a distance of nearly 10.5 million kilometres, with a year of just 7 and 3 quarter Earth days. Let's move on to our final planet, Kepler 444f. Even though this is the most distant planet, it still orbits at a distance of just 12 million kilometres, completing an orbit in just 9 and 3 quarter days. This is also the largest of the planets, having a radius of nearly 75% of that of the Earth. And even though this is the most remote of the planets, it may still have temperatures above 500 degrees Celsius. I do want to land here for a brief look round though. The red dwarf stars that orbit our main star 
are currently at their furthest distance from the primary at 66 astronomical units, or about twice the distance of Neptune. But there's no point in having a space and time machine if I can't do a little temporal trickery. If we move forwards in time about a century, we would find the red dwarf pair at the closest approach. The primary star still hangs large in the sky, looking 10 times bigger than our sun does from the Earth. If we turn around and look, we may be lucky enough to see the other pair of stars. These stars are bright points of light, much more prominent than any of the other stars in the sky. That's what I wanted to come here and see, a planet with multiple stars in the sky. So I think it's time for us to make our way back to our time and space machine. Before we finish, I make regular trips into outer space like this one. I also go exploring inner space and make journeys through time. If you want to accompany me on my adventures, then don't forget to subscribe. And there's no need to worry about running out of space in my time and space machine. Firstly, there aren't that many of you, but also it's bigger on the inside, so there's plenty of room for everyone. Kepler 444 is another ancient star with a rocky planetary system. This star system is roughly 11 billion years old, 80% of the age of the universe, and as I discussed in my video on Barnard's star, these systems keep telling us more and more about star and planet formation. Let's return to the relative cool of our own planet, and for now, and until the next time we go adventuring in our amazing universe, thank you for watching.